And hi, everybody. Welcome to the Emmy Award-winning Forbes Sports Money. I'm Bob Lorenz, joined, as always, by my co-host, Michael Ozani of Forbes Magazine. And let's talk about the latest edition of Forbes. You have NBA team valuations. How did the first year of the new collective bargaining agreement impact team values? Bob, I hope the NBA team owners paid Commissioner David Stern a nice little bonus, given what happened. We see team values rise an average of 30% to an average team value of $509 million. You're also looking at an average operating income of $11.9 million per team, by far the highest profitability we've seen since we've been doing these team values in 1998. Yeah, and to be honest, a year or two ago, if we would have been sitting here, we would not have said that, correct? No, no way. This is the most profitable the NBA has been since I've been following team finances. And one of the big surprises, at least for me, was that the Knicks regained the top spot. They passed the Lakers. The Knicks are the most valuable team worth $1.1 billion. They're going through a very successful renovation of Madison Square Garden. The Knicks also have the highest ticket price now, non-premium ticket price, $117, 33% more than the previous year. The Lakers worth a billion. They went up mm -hmm. two. They have a TV deal that's going to pay them, starting this season, an average of $180 million a year for the next 25 years. See, I would have thought that that TV deal would have kept the Lakers on top. Well, you know, it's interesting. For purposes of de uh, determining the salary cap for players, the Knicks TV deal is valued the same as the Lakers TV deal. So even though MSG pays the Knicks, they own the Knicks, a fraction of what the Lakers get paid, for purposes of the salary cap and revenue sharing and so forth, they're valued the same. So that's really what a buyer would pay in an arm's length transaction. And this increase in value is the offshoot of really driving down the revenue sharing from 57% to now 50% of league revenue, which is going to make a lot more teams be profitable and even make some of the smaller market teams more valuable. Like we just saw recently, the Memphis Grizzlies were sold for $377 million. That would have never happened. Nothing would have come close to that prior to the new CBA. All right, so are you saying every NBA NBA team is in the clear, or there's still maybe a few that are going to have trouble under the new CBA? You look at last year, the uh, lockout shortened season, 80% of the games you were talking about, eight teams showing operating losses. I would suspect in two years' time, when revenue sharing from the high revenue teams to the low revenue teams goes from 55 million to 200 million, you're probably going to have maybe only two three teams potentially losing money on an operating basis. The two I see struggling the most, the Bobcats, Charlotte Bobcats, terrible team, not drawing well, and you got the Hawks in Atlanta struggling. They also have a lot of debt on that franchise.